I remember when Beanox actually got a hold of the rights to create The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I remember them talking so much about how they wanted to bring the best Spider-Man game ever. They wanted to create a game with web swinging that rivaled, of course, Spider-Man 2's. They wanted to bring a new combat system that would, of course, trump every other Spider-Man game. And then, of course, they also wanted to bring some new gameplay possibilities that had never been seen in a Spider-Man game before. This was due to the fact that, obviously, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the video game, would be on some new hardware that, of course, it had never, any Spider-Man game had ever been on. And I remember that project actually wound up falling through because from what we got from the game, you can obviously tell that the game was a little rushed. Who it was rushed by? Was it Beanox? Was it rushed because of the fact that, of course, someone had quit their position, like the creative director or something like that? We don't know exactly why it happened, but you can tell it's rushed just due to how rusty the game feels. Now, is it an enjoyable game? Well, I've played the game, and I can honestly say that, personally, I did enjoy The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I know it has low reviews, but I did enjoy it just due to the fact that it does its job at allowing you to feel like Spider-Man, at least to an enjoyable degree. I won't say it was good, I won't say it was great, I won't say it was perfect, obviously, but it was capable of allowing you to feel like Spider-Man. Well, now we're going to be getting Spider-Man PS4 from the Insomniac. And one of the main things that they started off with was the same, the very same topic as, of course, Beanox did. And that was that they wanted to create a game that allowed you to feel like Spider-Man that would trump every other Spider-Man game. In fact, the template for a lot of things that we see is actually from Spider-Man 2, which was which is the most renowned Spider-Man game of all time. So that was essentially the template. And when I say the template, that don't mean that they took the files from that game and then, of course, brought it over and then created it for, of course, the PlayStation 4. What I mean by a template is that they took the gameplay ideas that was presented, they took the web swinging ideas that was presented in Spider-Man 2 and actually transformed them. They made them their own thing. And now, from what we hear about the web swinging from Game Informer, by golly, Spider-Man PS4 sounds like it's going to have amazing web swinging. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've never, as far as I can remember, played Spider-Man 2. I've never played it. I remember I've played the first one. I know I've played the third one, but I've never played the second one. And that may sound like taboo to a lot of Spider-Man fans, but one thing about me and my channel is that I love to be genuine. I love to be real, and that's part of my reality. I've never played Spider-Man 2. If I could go back and play it now, definitely I would, because, of course, Spider-Man PS4 is coming, and I would love to see exactly how much they build upon it, as, of course, we knew that it was the template for this game game. Now, they've also taken elements from other games and actually incorporated them into Spider-Man PS4 as well. However, the web swinging is what a lot of people usually worry about when a new Spider-Man game is announced. So, how did it come out? Well, from what we know from, of course, Game Informer and a little bit of information that they've given us and, of course, the directors of the game and what they've told us in video, we've learned that there's no reason for Peter Parker to ever stop. Let's talk about that first. There's no reason for Peter Parker to ever stop just due to the fact that they had already planned upon, of course, people running into buildings. They had already planned upon, of course, how well they want him to maneuver around this jungle gym of a city that is Manhattan. And with that being the case, of course, obviously, this means that the flow that we're going to have as we play as Spider-Man, once we have true, of course, player growth within the game and we understand its functions and its, of course, possibilities, then, of course, once you get going and you really have a true rhythm, there's no reason for you to ever stop besides your own player skill. This is something that contradicts exactly what the Beanox game had did in plenty of games before Spider-Man PS4. With other games in the Spider-Man series, once you ran into a building, Spider-Man would kind of fumble around and shit until you finally got control over him again. In this game, if you run into a building, Spider-Man will go up the building and moving on into the next topic, he can you can then press X to then vault over the building and if you press X again, if there's something that's close enough, he will kind of latch onto it and pull himself towards it so that that way, of course, your momentum shifts into momentum for you to get around that building. So definitely that all sounds pretty dope. 
Then we also have the mention that there will be other things that he can also do, such as, of course, in reacting to the environment and interacting with the environment. Of course, we saw in the new video that they had released for the web swinging that he goes through this little pipe that is actually being used at a construction site. I personally have never seen no shit like this in a Spider-Man game, yo. I mean, I haven't played them all. I'm not going to sit here and lie and act like I've played them all. I haven't played them all. So if there is something like this in another Spider-Man game, I just personally haven't seen it. But with what they're offering with this game makes it feel like the world can actually play a part into how well you do in web swinging. Because elements change all the time. Things change all the time. And of course, just think about how much construction you actually see in the city of New York or in Manhattan. And of course, everything that could be had from those construction sites. There could be new things for you to do, such as, of course, parkour challenges and stuff like that. I feel like they will introduce parkour challenges because we learned from other side missions, I mean, from Brian Intahar in the side missions talk that there will be a lot more side missions and the parkour is one of the main things that they were worried about. This is why we have a Peter Parker in this game that doesn't necessarily have to stop just due to the fact that he has such we will have such control over the movement that he does. Speaking of control, nothing is actually set or predetermined. So there is nothing in this game to where once you get close to it, Peter Parker will do this, Peter Parker will do that. There is nothing like that. Once you get close to something, it's up to you to input into the game and tell the game that you want to go here, there, and everywhere else. This also has to do with things that you want to perch on because if you don't want to perch onto something, Spider-Man will, he'll keep going, <laughs> he'll keep going, and of course, obviously, it just shows that there's going to be a lot to learn and a lot of player growth to be had, there's going to be the new dive mechanic, which we have full control over, so the little dive that we saw within the first trailer that Game Informer had released for Spider-Man PS4, that wasn't something because it took him too long or it isn't something that's automatic, this is something that we're going to be doing if we want to, of course, increase his speed, probably coming off of, of course, maybe if you're going slow and you release at the top you can then use the dive to go down and then of course throw out another web and then it'll increase his speed allowing you to go a little bit faster now just think of the possibilities that that alone has to offer to us as players once we of course get to realize exactly how much you can actually do with that then we could probably be of course climbing buildings busting it out and then of course throwing out another web climbing a building busting it out and just completely increasing the speed until maybe we get to the same amount of speed that we'll have once the web swinging is completely upgraded and that's the possibilities that spider-man ps4 has to offer with this web swinging now we won't know exactly what all can be offered until we get our hands on it until the millions have their hands on it and we start to see videos showing off exactly what can be done and of course those free roam videos that we always get for every spider-man game that allows you to free roam so once we have those videos out, then we'll truly be able to see what's possible. But from what we've seen thus far, the game definitely looks like it will be right there trying to contend with, of course, Spider-Man 2. And with it trying to compete with Spider-Man 2 so far, I mean, a lot of people who have played the game are already saying that it looks like it's going to be a hell of a lot better. Like, it's not competing with it. It's doing better than Spider-Man 2. So let me know how you guys feel about the web swinging. Um... Personally, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I've already said multiple times that I feel like Spider-Man PS4 and everything that it's showcasing does put it in the realm of Game of the Year status. Of course, we'll have to wait till E3 to see exactly what else is coming. Of course, the game won't be released until September 7, 2018, so we definitely will see a new gameplay trailer or some big gameplay reveal at E3. I'm definitely expecting for there to be some kind of probably 30 minutes with Spider-Man PS4 video that's going to be released. If there isn't going to be a demo release during E3 season, although I won't speak or, of course, go off of my own tangent about a potential demo, however, it could be a possibility. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that they could restrict for them to just allow us to get a feel for the game in a demo fashion, but I won't speak too much on that. Hopefully the game is great. Hopefully the game has some very, well, I know it's going to be great. I fucking know it's going to be great, dog. Like when you have people that get to test the game for four hours and they're already saying that it potentially is the best Spider-Man game of all time. 
Whew, I mean, all, all we have to worry about is really now it's just a story. The combat looks fucking amazing. The web swinging looks fucking amazing. All that's left now is the story. The characters. How good are the characters? How good is the story? Did the plot feel good? Does it feel like a Spider-Man plot? Does it feel like a Spider-Man game through its story? I mean, a lot of Spider-Man games have weird stories. Um, stories that aren't really too recognized. It's more so just the gameplay. But of course, we have had some games with some very amazing stories, such as the ones who wear Spider-Man and of course, Miguel O'Hara. Well, Spider-Man and I think Spider-Man 20, is it 2040? I, I always get the numbers mixed up. Is it 2049 or is it 2099? I don't know, but of course, Miguel O'Hara, that's who I'm talking about. The one with them two together, thats I know that's renowned. That's one of the best stories that a Spider-Man game has ever had. The one that was on GameCube, I know that scene is one of the best stories Spider-Man has ever had. So, definitely, let me know what you guys think about the web swinging. And of course, is there any worries that you have for the web swinging? That's another thing, too, because I talked about all of the good from the web swinging. Maybe you guys can tell me some worries that you've seen with the web swinging. I know people have already voiced their opinions on how clunky, of course, the dive actually seems because, of course, it just cuts into the animation. Like, it, it cuts into it. So it isn't something to where, like, he smoothly just, like, you know, dives down and then, of course, he starts to plummet. He actually just, boom, busts it out and he plummets immediately. So it feels like it interrupts the flow, of course, to the eye. But I feel like that's something that they probably can't change if they want to keep the mechanic in there. They can probably make it seem a little bit more smoother into the gameplay. But to be honest, I don't feel like they should try and worry about changing it. Because that's how you start to fuck shit up. But definitely, let me know how you guys feel about it. This is being Boy Mazi. Don't forget to do a little A-class gaming. And everything you do, don't forget to keep it A-class. I hope you guys enjoyed this today's video. And peace the heck out.